You know, that wasn't an All-Ireland winning performance. Probably should have won the game based on the second half performance. Is it a step too far to say it was the performance so far of the World Cup? Maybe not. OTBAN's performance rankings. I'm, I'm, I'm scratching my head. Performances with just lack that intensity. Boom. Am I right in saying Kenny's last All-Ireland was, what, 2015? 15, yeah. So Cats of Nine Lives is going to be nine years oh. next year. I just made that up on the spot. Isn't that good? Anyway, Kenny, like you mentioned that own Cody little jink past uh, Kean Lynch. That was the 25th minute. Mm-hmm. The run and the stick work. The following minute, Nicky Quaid pucks it out straight to Richie Reid. Points. The following minute, Barry Nash over Carrion. TJ pops over the free. Those three points in a row, I'm thinking, this is a lovely little period for Kenny. And then obviously, don't piss off Limerick because that's exactly what happened. And um was there, was there ever a moment we thought Kilkenny were going to win the game? Possibly. Yeah. Half time, I was like, this is a very real probability. Then Limerick, had, I think the first couple of scores, the second half, but then Kilkenny, of course, push on a little bit more, get a goal, uh, the goal that breaks the net. And um, that's all she wrote, really, isn't it? There was a moment at the start of the second half, you're waiting for that famous third quarter from Limerick. And funny, they had the best second half they probably had in this John Kiley era, but they actually were slowing up in the first five minutes of the second half. Tom Feenan went on this great solo run and should have passed it to TJ. In hindsight, of course. Should have passed it. And that could have helped the cause. You could argue, well, Galan had a chance in the first 30 seconds of the second half. If his his touch was a bit off, it was fired into him. And if his touch was good, that was almost a certain goal. So there's chances either end. The biggest question you have to say is how much does it cost to change the wedding venue and date? Mm. And is it worth doing that if your wedding is going to be on the same day or same weekend as an All-Ireland final? Because that is tough to do both. What's he going to do now? What's Buckley going to do now? Have a honeymoon. Have a honeymoon and think about, (coughs) Jesus, was that all worth it? it?" I'd say he'll have fun. Um, Like, yeah, yeah, that was the timing was terrible. I think I'm sure they booked it a couple of years ago before the uh, schedule and the calendar of the GF fixtures was changed. No, they they booked it this year. Did they? But then didn't realise that. So this, the All Ireland final is a week earlier this year. Of course. Anyway, and it's it's not going to be somebody's making the point that it's not going to go back that much further next year because Coldplay have already been booked for 2024 for the last two weekends of August. So maybe it's only the last weekend. Anyway. Yeah, 29th and 30th. We'll I think. talk about this later. The the fixtures and the scheduling and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, the positives from Kilkenny's point of view, the intensity, they, they were scoring from turnovers in the first half. Hugh Lawler was having a good game on game. I think as well. Kilkenny are in the red here because they did about as well as they could possibly have done and they got blown out in the last ten minutes. Like it didn't feel like a nine point game. It it really didn't. However, in retrospect now, that was what we were saying last night. Now it feels like uh, there was an inevitability because they started to lose everything at the start of the second half. They started to lose in their half back line. They started to lose in midfield. They started to lose um, in the half forward line as well. Even though they were playing about as well as they could have done, there's a few wides in the first half when they have opportunities. Mm. Walter Walsh, I'm sure, would would if he had his time back, would pass into the inside forward line and, and try and create something slightly different than taking on the shots that he took on. I actually thought from general play he did okay. Like. Uh, you know, Kyle Hayes certainly wasn't dominating at the start the way Kyle Hayes did dominate later on. Now I know they moved him off him relatively quickly, but I don't think there's much more Kilkenny could do. A few players could play way better, like Adrian Mullen. I think the the lack of hurling over the course of the season caught up with him yesterday. Um, but other than that, like they don't have much else that they can point to and say we're going to be better for this experience. We're going to be better next season because, like next season, TJ's a year older. Richie's a year older. Richie Reid, I'm talking about. Uh, will Richie Hogan be back? I'm not sure. Like, after that, um, there's probably a few others I'm just not thinking off the top of my head. Uh, and in the first half, they got the puck out really right. In the second half, they couldn't do anything about it. So that's why I'd have them in the red, because this is about as, this might be as good as it gets for them. There was a point, too, as well, just before half time. Uh, Kilkenny were four points up. Keown, I think, hit the post um, with an easy enough chance for a point. But it was actually fortuitous because it came down to Owen Cody goal and he chance. tried to replicate his goal again but it was an extremely tight angle he put it across goal. But had he scored that, that was seven points just before half time. Instead, they went down the other end and, and Morris got his point. Yeah. Yeah. Now TJ had a free after that which is central and he put it wide but then immediately scored a free afterwards. There was a different sense that Kenny were targeting goals and I guess the, the narrative in advance of the game was they're going to need goals to beat this Limerick team because Limerick are going to probably hit 30 points exactly what we expected them to hit. Um, like they probably needed leaders in the second half. Adrian Mullen, you mentioned, didn't really step up in the second half. Oh. TJ Reid probably. I mean, TJ's performance in the second half wasn't fantastic, but then none of the Kenny players could really get out, get get out of the 
the second or third gear in the second half like they, they completely controlled that Limerick half back line in the first half which was really really impressive because it just isn't very regularly done um, but I mean when you, was it 11 Limerick players scored from play at one 11 point? yeah like that's you can't legislate for that and you can't control that um, can you? like no, it's limited. They just have so much, so much shooting talent across the pitch. I know a lot of yeah. other teams at the top, top tier do, but like they were winning their battles in the second half, Limerick, all over the pitch. And in the first half, you could say Hugh Lawler was on top of Gillan. There was other battles that, that maybe were going Kenny's way, but I know Murphy's puckouts were working as well. But that didn't last. And I don't even think it's a fitness thing. It's just Limerick almost switching the gear when they want to. I'd say the the class of twenty twenty three between Kilkenny and Galway should go on a night out. <laughs> and just discuss the post-traumatic stress of what Limerick do to you in the second half because they put both sides in the semi-final and final respectively put so much intensity into their performances yeah. and they ran out of steam and that's when Limerick got going it's like, like fighting a heavyweight boxer where you give it your all and then that's not enough and you get knocked out that's the feeling playing Limerick Derek, Derek Ling mentioned the decisions uh, at the end after the match he said we didn't get the 50-50s there was a couple of other decisions and on 58 minutes th- there was that moment where there's what point or two in it and the 65 Kenny should have had a 65 should they it was definitely it definitely touched the Limerick man last did it definitely I, I only saw one replay of it now and it looked like no 100% it was fair enough yeah yeah. I, I, no I think it was 65 like it did appear to touch the Limerick lad and then he, he let, let it go thinking it was a Kenny lad who last touched it but it, the last touch for me was a Limerick all day long um, they score straight off the puck out yeah so that's a two point uh, swing two point swing it was mad but look I, I, I understand where Derek Ling is coming from I don't think it changed the, the I think it's the delaying match. the inevitable really yeah but possibly but like look they're in the red so we should explain why I suppose or justify why like from the 28th minute onwards they scored 1-7 yeah. compared to Limerick's 25 points but on the other side they're how in would the red you eva- because it's not getting any better than this but how, how would you evaluate Ling's first year or has uh, this nothing to do with Ling because of Limerick uh, I think I think I think they were like they provided a different challenge I think like um, I think they got a lot right in terms of setting up the first half to, to try and take stuff on in the second half but they couldn't they couldn't get the short puck out of the way in the second half and so uh, you're bombing balls down on the tallest, biggest half-back line in the history of the game. And, you know, what's going to happen? You're going to get the ball straight back at you, straight over your head, do it again, straight again. It's like, oh my God. So, uh, whatever it was that they were able to do in the first half, they couldn't in the second. Now, I'm going to talk more with Anthony Nash about this on Friday, um, but he was making the point after the game that the the wind had a really significant impact in the first half and that it was holding up Nicky Quaid's puck out yeah. and so that was allowing Kilkenny to push on and like explode into it when in the second half Limerick could do that to the Kilkenny puck out that was game over um, uh, at half time one of the pundits uh, in the studio was talking about the fact that, that Limerick need to do something different here they, they might need to just completely change something but then I, I was also concerned in the second half and this has been pointed out in the comments as well I would have liked to have seen a little bit of shithousery from Kilkenny in the second half when things were going I don't think they had any energy left to be a shithouse as, as Corky says in the comments can't understand how no Kilkenny player had a, hadn't a contact lens, lens issue in the second half something needed to be done to try and stop the juggernaut but like so, did, I, I didn't see anything different or the unique the difference is when Quaid had his issue he knew that Limerick had so much uh, storage to fall back on whereas like you can delay the inevitable like we're saying you can go down and waste a bit of time but you still have to get up and play on you still have to be proactive and I'm not sure they had anything left to give Like, and yet still this game was pretty close up until the last 15 minutes mm. I mean 30 scores to 17 that's why they're in the red they did as well as they could and they got blown out at the end that, which is the most frustrating thing that I, I don't think there's anything in those 50-50s conversation like there's nothing that you can say as a Kilkenny person today and go if we had just done this this and this like it, it could have been different it could not have been different the best team won by a mile I'm not sure I agree with you Jerry though that, that this is the end of this Kilkenny team that's why they're in the red I don't like, think that I don't think that they can close the gap on this Limerick team is the point it's not the end of the team I think next year they'll be back and very very likely they'll be in an all Ireland semi-final because you know uh, what's going on in Galway I don't know uh, but more than likely it's going to be Kilkenny in an All Ireland semi final against the second best team from uh, from Munster because of the way the system is is set up and there's every chance they'll be back in an All Ireland final next year. But what are they going to do differently? Yeah, I think Limerick have a tougher tougher in Munster than they do in the back end of the All Ireland. Like they seem to have Galway and Kilkenny's number, uh, but Clare on a good day you never know. Tip on a better day maybe. 
Mm. Uh, but that's what you're kind of clutching at straws really at the same time you know also they, Kilkenny had kind of an inability to deal with Keane Lynch moving up to centre forward yeah uh, the, what, the last seven minutes of the first half so in midfield he was doing alright and he seems to do a lot more damage when he switched at Reedy man of the match in the Ireland final is a big deal they should have given it to Keane Lynch like or it, Burns it, we'll come back yeah. to this uh, yeah, or, or Burns I think because Burns in the first half wasn't as good as he was in the second half um, no but you're right when, when Kilkenny were, like, they were six points ahead I know that's not a mountain lead against this hurling mm. side but they were six here and you have to think like if it wasn't for Keane Lynch yeah. who knows what would have happened like it's Lynch a, was it's, the only man who stood up it's a dominant display when the team are struggling and that's the hallmark of absolute quality so anyway uh, that, that's my only quibble yeah we'll go back to Limerick uh, we'll move on into the other red uh, this morning and Irish golf very harsh very harsh very harsh, very harsh. Should be here. Well, we shouldn't be lumping them all in so the way I'll explain the weekend from an Irish perspective Brian Harmon of course winning a bit of a I guess procession towards the finish line for, for Brian Harmon his first major title a six shot win for him one under round of 70 yesterday nice and easy for him uh, 13 under John Ram among those players and joined second with Seb Straka Tom Kim and Jason Day from an Irish perspective so uh, four players missing the cut Darren Clark on eight over Alex Maguire ten over Seamus Power and Shane Lowry both on four over all failing to make the weekend Padraig Carrington slightly better weekend made the cut um, and I guess the reason we're talking about this is, is Rory McIlroy tied for sixth um, par or better for every single round uh, as he said afterwards he was quite happy obviously not to have not won and the drought uh, major drought continues into a, a decade tenth year, next yeah. year yeah, tenth year yeah. Uh, started, started the final round yesterday very strongly three birdies from the third hole on but then the heavy rain came in met, momentum was lost and um, I think he's playing really well the Scottish Open last week has highlighted that um, and he can be pretty proud of himself of course he has he once again not won a major and I see your smirk chair but uh, <laughs> I don't think Rory McIlroy has earned a place in the red after his performance the weekend. This content-driven man, like, you either win or you lose, according to Sergey Roy. And oh. if you don't win the Open, it's not you're black in red. And white. It's not Do you know black what I mean? You can improve, you can play well. It doesn't necessarily mean you're red. You can't put McIlroy in the same colour as Shane Lowry. Golf's a hard who sport. missed the cut and smashed his club. Or actually, he didn't smash it. He kind of just bent it very smoothly and calmly, kind of sociopathically, like, and it just snapped right there and he just walked away with no emotion in his face. Um, you can't lump him in. Well, uh, sorry. Rory. How, how many majors did they both win this year? Oh, my God. This is the end of the major season, right? Yeah. So it's not just the British Open we're talking about here. Like, Rory's season was built around winning one of the four, but particularly the Masters, and then, okay, I'll make do with my, my open victory that stops my 10-year drought. And last week... And I, I was the one arguing for to put him in green last week because he was sensational and he's going to have a brilliant rest of the season. It's very likely he might end up winning again both of the tours, right? And it'll be a great achievement. At the end of his career, he'll look back and go, yeah, I was the dominant golfer outside of the majors for those years. And he will feel not great about himself not winning the majors. Like Rory's in the red because Rory's, Rory would view himself in the red. He might say, I'm doing great. It, you know, so my putting is like, Harrington is like, if he can't put like this and win a major. He just can't. I don't know if you saw on Saturday, he opened up and he was ripping the course apart. At that stage, John Ram had just ripped the course apart and it looked like this is going to be one of the all-time great opens because you assumed Harmon was going to come back to us. But he missed the birdie put on, was it, did it go birdie, par, birdie, birdie and it should have been birdie, 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 eagle but he missed two putts and you were like oh that's just they're just slipping away and then hit every green in regulation for the first nine holes and then the drive went a little bit wayward in the back nine and the whole thing frittered out and he couldn't buy a putt and even yesterday even yesterday when he starts to get going he just couldn't get the putts to drop to start making the crowd be noisy and to make Harmon be sitting there going uh oh uh oh but he could do it because his putting is not good enough at the moment he won last week with his putting exactly like his, this no his putting wasn't exactly like this last week he's the, some of the putts dropped the putts yeah, dropped in 17 and 18 last week that, that weren't dropping this week and that's the problem with, with McElroy is like absolutely sensational but he's such a streaky putter that it's either hot or it's 
absolutely ice cold and it was ice cold on Saturday and ice cold on Sunday and he's, he doesn't want to be in the amber he doesn't want to be patronised by you two no, no, going well, oh Rory well done you you got a top 10 yeah, enemy. Would you rather, he wouldn't want you as, he wouldn't want you as a coach or a conference would you rather be, you're telling him he's this big loser would you rather be, you haven't won a major in 10 years it's not that pick would you rather be patronised in amber or disrespected in red Jer? He's being disrespected being put in red, to be honest with you. Like, tied for sixth at the Open. Friends don't bullshit you, Shane. No, of course they don't. And, and he should be winning majors. But he did not play badly at, like, at the weekend. He played great, but he can't buy a putt. And that's why he can't be an amber. It's like three quarters of my game is great. Drive for show, putt for dough. You can't. No, you can't. You just can't put him in red. Like, uh, this time yesterday... We were building up as like maybe he could do it, no. and then a few hours into no, no, Sunday, we're like, Saturday "Geez, he started. He started off quite well." No, no, he started no, no, no. Off, and it you was, never know what happened, right? You never was, know what happened. You do. It was gone on Saturday. It was absolutely gone on Saturday, and he knew it coming off, and his face knew it on the back nine on Saturday. It was it was over on Saturday. There wasn't a hope in hell. He, he could have shot a sixty three yesterday, and it still wouldn't have mattered because it was over. I it was there's, gone. There's no way McIlroy thinks he's in red. McIlroy thinks he's in amber, right? Because if he thinks he's in red, he's never going to be in contention again. If he goes by your attitude, where this guy, he's, his putting's letting him down, he's three quarters of his game, he's just not good enough anymore. If he doesn't fix his putting, he's never going to win another major. He said himself after the round, right? He <coughs> says, every time I tee it up, I'm right there. I can't sit here and t- be too frustrated. Overall, it was a solid performance, not spectacular. That's the definition of the performance rankings amber. It was solid, but not spectacular. Like He has literally told us to put him in amber. By like his, it, literally his post round interview yesterday was him going, put me in amber. He's uh, he's had the same level of success in the in the major championships this year as you know everybody who didn't. Win but one. that's like uh, okay, you're just looking. It, it is binary for McIlroy at this stage in his like. career. It is, it is. I'm telling you. So he so okay, he's gonna win. He's he's gonna walk around with the wheelbarrow and they're gonna fill it with cash every week between now and the end of the season. And it's great. And I I you know it's fair play to him. And it's really important for golf that McElroy continues to be the one that everybody wants to watch and I understand that but at the same time it is binary now at this stage in his career in terms of whether or not that was a good week or a bad week he's not thinking that was a grand week because he didn't win like he's going to have loads of great weeks for the rest of the season and I still think I actually think that the Scottish Open the way he managed to see that out like I think that's going to be important to him into the future Mm. and I, I do think he probably will win a major but and then the dams will open he's in the red today because he didn't get it done over the weekend I don't think so did you hear his uh, interview with Sky after his round yesterday but uh, but uh, they all have to all the golfers lie to each other they, reference the Ryder Cup golfers have had the yips and they're like no I don't have the yips no, no, what are you talking no. about if you heard it go on go on if you heard it he was very self-critical in other performances this year in majors even and he said no today it wasn't bad this weekend not so bad very disappointing not to win not the man who's talking about himself in the red a guy who's saying there's room for improvement a guy who's saying I'm nearly there a guy who's saying I know I'm still good enough and I just need that little bit more certainly not a guy who's in the red let me put it this way here an Irish golfer yesterday Rory McIlroy secured his 20th top 10 finish in a major since he last won one that's pretty consistent I mean, yeah, the man, deserves, just, the man deserves, yeah. put some respect on his name. This there. sport what? is ruthless and brutal and doesn't lend itself to the performance rankings because there's only one winner every weekend. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. golf is tough. It, it wasn't Rory this weekend. He was in the green last week when he won. But it was the, the, the season for McIlroy's built around. That's patronising. It wasn't. It was yeah, the, that would have been. The, the finish on 17 and 18 last week was absolutely spectacular. No, brilliant. Yeah, totally. Did we put him in the green? I don't think we did. We did. I did insisted we? on putting him in the green. No, I don't you, think we did. Uh, we did. I don't remember typing in Murray McIlroy last We must week. have, if you won the Scottish Open. I think you might have mentioned it, but I, I think it was an honourable mention. No, I don't think it was there. He was in the green. Sure, we'll go back and check. Someone will, someone will no, tell No, we us. won't. Well, we, we've only talked... This is what, we, how we end up. We only talk about Rory, because Potter had a decent weekend, but then the other Irish lads had howlers, like Lowry breaks his club off his neck. Uh, not as, as violent as that sounds but kind of bent it around his, the back of his neck um, so I think he'd be disappointed with his performance Shane Lowry um, I mean a 6 over 77 on Friday and then he lost in the back nine uh, to be honest so his frustration got, got the better of him by the way Patrick Harrington was, was asked about it afterwards and he said what do you, what do you make of Shane Lowry breaking his club and he was like well Golfers are allowed to lose their cool as long as they don't damage the course. Yeah, he didn't care. Yeah, he didn't give a I mean, No, they're mates. I mean, I think he's right. Larry wants to break his club. He's got. Yeah. They're, they're going to fix that. They'll fix that for him. They'll give him a new one. It'll be grand. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you're allowed to show a bit of frustration, I think. Uh, and Brian Harmon, fairy tale uh, week for him. 26th in the world. Just the third left hander to win the Open, huh. lads. Uh, Bob Charles in 1963 and Phil Mickelson in 2013. So, that's fun fact. Um, it was very underwhelming, wasn't it, when he won? 
absolutely buckling him down on a Sunday evening <laughs> the kind of polite applause from the crowd I know he took it well and then he's just walking off at the distance and I oh, is, Tommy, is Tommy Fleetwood also in the Amber Lads is he? Uh, why? because yeah. he did well I mean, come earned on. a lot more money for himself in contention oh, they don't again. care about the and money someday, they're so rich they don't care about the money anymore he will win it unless it's live you money know, it's, I'm, I'm, it's I'm glad you're not involved in golf like you would break these people's spirit why is Jordan Henderson not in the red? Do we miss an opportunity here? You know, you know, you have an opportunity to influence these beforehand. I do, I do. Well, it's yeah. just it's coming to me now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can Sorry, why am I united on the red? The glazers are sticking around. Do we miss this too? This would be. I love this. Are you just suppressing this? Do you know, this would yeah. be great. But uh, well, look, this is what we went with, and I think uh, it's fair. You can talk to me united if you like, rather not. Uh, well, we we will. We have a good amber though. The season is nearly upon us. We're like ten days away from the uh, Indy Shield. Yeah. Is it that? Is it that close? Jesus, it is. Right. Always thinks up when you deal community shield. Who's in it this year? City and who won the cup? City and City. City, City against the uh, who came second? Presume Arsenal. 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 City Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Man yeah. United yeah. for finishing. City Arsenal. Runners up in the cup now. I think it's usually the Premier League runners up, isn't it's it? It's Premier League runners up. Yeah. Second. Uh, United. Not, City Arsenal. The correction. Uh, we move on to the amber. Yeah. GA coverage and the GA fixtures, generally speaking, the uh, Camogie fixtures at the weekend went a little bit under the radar. Um, not least because it's all out at Hurland final weekend as well but so you've put water for Camogie in the green right yeah of course and they're through is it 78 70 something years 78, 78 years 78 yeah. years since they've been in and uh, they both all Ireland semi-finals puck of the ball in the in between the two of them mm. and the uh, LGFA semi-finals are next weekend but they're getting almost no coverage at the moment compared with uh well, the main the main bit of coverage about the LGFA and women's football season, Gaelic football, have been about the non-strike strike, right? That has been the significant thrust of the coverage, as opposed to analysis of the matches and uh, everybody knowing exactly what's going on. But there's been big surprises or big name teams have been going out and struggling, uh, particularly in the football. And in the hurling, you've got this incredible bubbling up of Waterford, who might be about to win an Ireland before the men's team. Uh, and it's getting almost no coverage I just think it's a, instead of aping what the men did with their season there was a big opportunity for the women to let the men rush through like okay you've made a bad decision there you've, you've, you've hand the summer rest of the summer over to soccer and whatever else is going on and they could have sat back and gone well it leaves us free for like all of August and the first two weeks of September and we're going to have an Ireland <laughs> hurling slash camogie final on the first Sunday in September like there always is it's just it's going to be the women's and I thought that was like I thought it was a fairly obvious thing to do. Obviously, the split season, they don't own their own pitches, and this is all part of the, this is all part of the GA. You know, now you've got to do what we're doing, just in case. You know, uh, everybody realizes that these sports are amazing, and you get all the coverage. I don't know what they like. I, anyway, what what's the rush? Why well, are we flaking through this? Like, I don't. I know it's you're talking about the men's now, right? Everything, everything. The last intercounty fixture is Sunday, the thirteenth of August. It's around the corner. I know it's for the club game. But my argument is club game's too parochial for everyone to be interested in. If you want to spread the game to the widest audience, what are you rushing for? This is great at the moment. Like It's adrenaline rush. It's like now we're on to the football final. It's brilliant. Very, very exciting. But like there's absolutely no room to breathe or reflect. Yeah, I, I disagree somewhat on the club the club thing. Club is parochial by its very definition, but I, I also think club is only parochial because we, it doesn't get the, the, the space to breathe, as you say. Like it needs space to breathe in order for people to become. Doesn't need that much space. Well, like I, do you know, we were all interested in the Kilmacote Lens stuff last year because it had. But that was room. an extraordinary moment, and it was obviously nothing to do with the fixture list. Yeah, it was mental. But but like the club fixtures. So uh, so uh, did. Glenn beat Kilku in the Ulster final or Ulster semi final? Ulster club final, yeah. Ulster club final. Like, um, so how many people were legitimately interested in that? Because I would have been on your side, Shane, the whole way through. I just don't feel like it has justified the handing over. Um, so Glenn played Kilku, if, if memory serves, and fairly controversial. On the field afterwards, there's like, well, what they were doing was completely unacceptable. And uh, I was like, oh, this is very interesting, isn't it? But like, it kind of was a tiny little, just a little, a little kind of bubble of a story, and then it disappeared. But if anybody had, like, if, if that was an inter county game, where on the field afterwards they're like, oh, that's completely unacceptable, <clears throat> we would still be talking about it. So I'm not sure it has crossed over to mainstream. Yeah, but it's give it a bit of time. Like, the Dublin Senior Championship is, is very competitive Kilmico don't necessarily walk it 
Uh, no, but uh, they don't play very interesting football. No, they don't. Like, there's a, a black death element to a lot of, uh, to some of the club teams, for whatever reason. Yep. They don't play the same swashbuckling style as the county team. Like, I, 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 like I was in Galway last summer and I went to a couple of Galway club championship matches just on a, uh, on a Sunday just to watch it. Yeah. I, and I have no, re- and I had no affiliation with any of the teams. So, but that's, you have a tourist passing interest in it. Yeah, but is that not the is that not the is that not the type of people they're trying to draw into the club game? I don't know. I don't think. So. I don't think. So. Well, well, the the, the, the inter county fans that have no interest in the club until they actually watch a match and they're like, oh, this is actually really high quality. Well, it depends. Like if you watch Glen Kilku, that's really it's it's high quality football. A lot of them are inter county players anyway. No, if the if the general motivation, if the overall goal is to promote the club game in a much better way, then yeah, this is a huge success. But I also thought that the GA's mandate was to spread the game to the widest number of people and you're alienating a huge cohort by doing this but in my opinion but are you not, are you not bringing in all, are you not like you're giving the club game space how is that have, alienating them we have seven months to, to have this debate well, but I'll be look it's there for a reason I'm saying also I know we're going to talk to Seamus Hickey here about Limerick and we're going to do a lot on Limerick I see one comment there saying that we're not doing enough celebrating Limerick but so one question I will ask is uh, John Kiley 13 and 13 finals 100% record is this Limerick side the best ever or do they have to win it next year to make it statistically uh, we're moving on to Limerick and Green yeah yeah yeah. before we finish Um, uh, that was the point I was making about the conversation with Nash uh, on Friday I was like can't say that now and it's hard not to say it now basically Mm -hmm. that's uh, you know Obviously, if they win next year, it, it, it ends all debate. But, that, but that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Like that's just statistically. But are they actually? So I, th- I think the conversation is now about the greatest GA team of all time, and they're right there with the Dubs. Mm. Like, well, hold on. To compare it uh, are they right there with the Dubs? They're right, right there. They're nip and tuck. Yeah, right? to win two more All Irelands, they're right there with the Dubs. Uh, if so, it, it'll be it'll be five next year. Yeah, but it'll actually be six and seven. Hmm. And so um, they are they are catching up on the dubs. Like the, the most uh, mic drop moment for me was the thirtieth point when it goes over the bar and Kylie and Kinnerk just embrace. It's like because that was their target. Yeah, it was obviously yeah. very much a there we go. Like they didn't care about the twenty ninth point, but the thirtieth point was like we've done it. We've reached like so. They're they're such just killers. Uh, they don't hold back. Lovely photo there on, on screen of John Kylie and Joe McKenna. Um, man, I gave a lot to Limerick Curling as well. It was nice to see that little moment. Those eyes. Uh, Kylie's eyes. <laughs> Sorry, that, Kylie. Uh, that five minute period when he was on his own up there with his kids, they lifted a trophy together <laughs> and then he took it himself. But so. Went up to JP. Uh, they, they actually went into a highlights thing in the stadium oh. for a couple of minutes and I was like oh they're going to miss the John Carley presentation here and the highlights kept going but he he was last right and he was waiting for everybody else and loads of people that brought their kids up and he was like halfway up when he was like oh I don't have my kids with me and so he legs it onto the field like literally kind of some of the Kilkenny players are coming through the tunnel and he's kind of gently waiting for them politely going well, how are you lads and he legs it over and grabs the two girls and then suddenly they're like the, the three of them are up there um, and then he lets them go and then he has a little moment where he has a dance and he's dancing for about two minutes leading the crowd in a sing song and then he spots JP and brings him down and it's like uh, it was the most celebratory I haven't seen all the trophy lifts now because some years you're just trying to get out but um, a massive crowd stayed as well and a lot of Kilkenny people stayed so I think they were appreciating what they'd seen yeah I know. I was noticing that when they ran away with it at the end of the game I didn't see on TV anyway a lot of Kilkenny fans leaving but that uh, five minute period or so where Kylie just went into overdrive was magic love seeing that oh even before his Absolutely interview on TV it. he was losing the head no like. inhibitions like just went for it yeah mm. and uh, that is like to apparent to cliche that is what it's all about though like that is just brilliant to see why do you think he was, was it because I don't know, it's I'd, say, I'd say it's relief because it was before the semi-final against Galloway he was getting a bit ratty with media felt it was a bit of an unfair dig at, at his players and his squad and the perceived unfair advantage that they have and he obviously disagrees and he said they put a lot of work into it this is all very natural stuff but start, I think it's the release of energy yeah? yeah and the start of the year was the, there's a softening up going on against us so like it had been the slow steady build and the, the, like the Munster Championship they, as somebody in the comments says they needed Tipperary to screw up for them to be able to win the competition and winning that competition gave them the time off yeah. to work on stuff and get everybody back fit as opposed to playing an extra game that's, you why, know? I, that's why I think Munster might be more of a challenge for them these days than the latter part of well, that's, Ireland like. that was the consensus among the people I was speaking to yeah. like, like, just get out of Munster because they're nine point semi-final victory nine point final victory I mean 
Jeez, they're a Croke Park team. Like uh, all the cliches about the great teams, like well, they really do come alive in Croke Park. They seem to understand the geometry of the stadium better than any team has ever played there. It's also like the Limerick support. Uh, uh, the, there should be a word of the Limerick support because Ashing O'Reilly spoke to a few ones in the, uh, outside Croke Park, and they actually said the interest in this team has reached fever pitch. Like you think in the first year this will be at, at its highest, but every year that Limerick get better and better. And I met Hammy Dawson, a Limerick super fan, down in Limerick last week. They lose the heads over this team. Like and rightly so they're unbelievable Cal O'Neill is 21 years of age comes off the bench and but yeah. does what he does as well like the yeah. future this, it's not the end of this team either which is scary uh, no the age profile is good but at the same time Munster was a real struggle for them like mm. and Clare right there with them oh Clare Clare must be kicking themselves what the hell do they have to do to beat Kilkenny because I, I think Clare would have had more in the tank in the last yeah. 10 minutes and I don't know if they just understand a bit more or if they're less in awe of this Limerick team because they play them more often I don't know I don't know let's talk about that with Seamus Hickey in a moment there's one more left Waterford and we're going to do this in more detail with Sarah Donovan yeah I think we should mention definitely Waterford uh, after the weekend of course Cork uh, progressed into the All-Ireland Camogie final as well with a 15 points to 2-6 win over Galway but um, yeah it was really all about Waterford wasn't it and uh, 78 year gap bridged um, started out of the blocks pretty slowly in that semi-final as well but I mean came into it and uh, in the end it was a 112 to 111 uh, win over, over Tipperary uh, that slow start 1945 was their last appearance in a final uh, Beth Carton player of the match um, but other players stepped up to the mark as well Vicky, Vicky Faulkner in defence Lorraine Bray as well it was Carton that gets ma- uh, player of the match because she gets 8 points half of them from play um, Tip probably be kicking themselves a little bit they had chances but Waterford certainly the, the story of the weekend of the it was Camogie. a seriously slow start wasn't it they were 1-7 to 3 points down mm. Waterford after 25 minutes so to come back from there and for Tip to only score 4 more points like it's an unbelievable performance after the 25th minute onwards but yeah like you say we'll talk about, to Sarah about it but 78 years of waiting here we go 2 weeks time mm. uh, right that's this week's performance rankings OTBAN's performance rankings 